My pleasure and honor to be here with my friend and colleague, Rabbi Danya Ruttenberg, who um, wrote this great book recently called Nurture the Wow. Check that out. Um, and is also a social justice activist and Jewish educator. She's currently the rabbinical rabbi in residence, rabbi in residence at Avoda National. Uh, she resides in Chicago, but does that on a national level. Can you tell us a little bit about what Avoda is? Avoda is an amazing organization. Um, we train Jewish leaders for lifelong work in social and economic justice. And we have been doing that through a few flagship programs, a year-long service corps, and a fellowship for people who are a little further right. along. And now I'm taking it to the Jewish world as a whole. Awesome, awesome. So you and I share an interest of bringing Jewish learning and spirituality to the social justice sphere. And maybe you can share a little bit about how you think um, spirituality can enhance the justice work. Um, and vice versa, vice, vice versa, how the justice work can, can enhance our, our, our Jewish spirituality. I mean, they're, they're, they're so deeply intertwined, right? I mean, you see it, first of all, you see it all over the tradition. You know, uh, Jewish law says you're supposed to, um, or suggests that you make a few, uh, drop a few coins in the tzedakah box, mm -hmm. um, donate a little money before you pray, which, in my experience, transforms very much uh, mm -hmm. what you pray for mm -hmm. and how you pray. Um, and where your mind is. So there's, you know, in some ways, the tradition is, is amazing and already orienting us mm -hmm. towards thinking beyond ourselves. Yeah. But I think particularly at this moment when people are, are really thinking a lot about social justice mm -hmm. and thinking a lot about where the world is broken mm -hmm. and what needs to happen, um, I think people have forgotten that they need to be not just refilling the well, not just... Uh, I mean, that's a part of it. You know, the reason that activists burn out yeah. so much is because they're taking from their, you know, they're just using up right. everything they've got and then just sort of giving it over and then right. they, they feel empty. Yeah. And often a feeling like not much has come back to them. Mm -hmm. So having a spiritual practice can not only refill that mm -hmm. and keep it filled on a regular basis, but if you go deep enough into a spiritual practice, and mm -hmm. my, my spiritual practice, I'm yeah. Jewish, you know, traditional Jewish spiritual practice, but mm -hmm. I think meditation will do it. Um, going deep enough in your writing work will do it. I mean, I think there are a lot of things that can get you there. Um, if you go deep enough, you start not just filling up the well, mm -hmm. but being able to draw from a, a larger source. Mm -hmm. From, uh, you know, in Hebrew, in, in Jewish language, it's drawing from the bore, yeah. right? From the well versus the air. This the wellspring. Something opens up, and then the places where you're offering of yourself don't even come from your small self. Yeah. You're tapping into something larger that's that's fueling you and animating you. Yeah. Part of what I hear you saying is not just leading from doing and thinking, but also leading from being. Right? When we lead from that deeper place, um, it's, uh, it, it's much greater than just what we're able to, to do on our own. Right. So part of what you're sharing is a spiritual practice outside of the justice work. What about the justice work as a spiritual practice? I, of course. I mean, yeah. you know... Uh, Abraham Joshua Heschel famously said that when he was marching uh, on Selma with Dr. King, that he felt like he was praying with his feet. Mm -hmm. And I think when we do anything, and particularly the work of giving ourselves over to uh, helping other people, yeah. um, that's a profound <laughs> spiritual practice. I mean, there are two categories mm -hmm. of mitzvot, of commandments. One is this personal connection to the divine, right? The ways that we offer ourselves towards the 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 great everythingness, mm -hmm. if you will, and um, and the other are all these commandments of, of human beings to one one to each other, and when we do the work to try to make the world a better place, um, I mean it fills us up, yeah. right? And it, it again taps us into the ways that we're interconnected, right. and that I'm not just my small isolated self in my tiny little box, but there's a communion between us and that it taps us both into the ways in which we're all linked mm -hmm. um, and I think that can be very powerful and very yeah. sustaining yeah yeah that's beautifully put so I think one of the challenges I see mm -hmm. is that um, folks are so overextended and they're working and they have family and they try mm -hmm. to maintain their health and their intellectual life and they often have to make one choice or the other am I going to kind of have a, a spiritual practice or am I going to kind of do you know get involved in societal work. Right. And um, 
Uh, I wonder if there's any way to navigate that tension. Because, I, because I, I mean, I do see a lot of people doing justice work, but they're burnt out, they're not spiritually rooted. And others who, you know, are engaged in tefillah, prayer, or Talmud Torah, Jewish learning on a daily basis, but can't really get to that societal level, or, or not in a serious way in any sense. Right. right? Is there, I mean, what would you say to people who are just struggling to find this balance? Um, it really doesn't have to be. Uh, it's not a binary thing. Right. I mean, both because... <clears throat> Um, I think when we learn Torah with the intention of making ourselves useful yeah. to the world, what we learn and how we learn it is going to be very different. Yeah. And then we become uh, deeper, stronger, mm -hmm. more capable people who have more to offer. And so then whatever it is we're doing next is on another level. Yeah. Um, and because, again, you know, we can go to a protest and offer that up as an offering to God and to human mm -hmm. and to other people. Mm -hmm. And that can be a form of prayer in its own yeah. right. So it doesn't, it really doesn't have to be one or the other. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to say about this yeah. is that um, if we give ourselves the space to do this work and, you know, having a spiritual practice is, is something that we do on a regular basis. And if we do it with the right intention, yeah. it changes us, right? Mm -hmm. It changes how we see ourselves. It changes how we engage with yeah. other people. It changes how we engage with the world, with God, if that's a category that works for you. Um, right, so if we do this thing and we do it in a deeper way, it changes us, and that also changes how we understand the social justice work. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. Gandhi used to get on the trains when he was in the early days of organizing India, and he would say, this is the hand that we're going to use to defeat the British. Mm -hmm. This is the Hindu-Muslim conflict. This is the status of women. This is the untouchables and the sort of damage mm -hmm. that the class, caste system can do. Um, this is addiction, and this is our dependence on the British economy and mm -hmm. the need to start spinning our own cloth. Yeah. And he understood that it was all connected yeah. because he was living in a space where the interconnectedness of all things was the default, default setting. Mm -hmm. And you know, Dr. King wasn't just siloed in civil rights, he right. was also working uh, against the war in Vietnam for, yeah. um, for union rights, you know, when you start to see yeah. that you're connected to everything, it changes how you move right. through the world. Yeah. You know, uh, on, the, on the front of Dr. King, I, I, I think about how he had a, spiritual, a daily spiritual writing practice, as I know we both do as well. And uh, this wasn't writing a speech or writing an op-ed, right. but reflecting on the emotions and complexity within himself and gaining self-awareness and, and, and sacred, you know, spiritual attunement, if mm -hmm. you will. And I think that part of what Kedusha, holiness, is, it's about making something non-instrumental, right? It's just kind of mm -hmm. embracing something as yeah. it ends in itself. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, today actually my, my kids are coming to, to your talk and uh, I used to call it work-life balance and now it's work-life integration. So too, spirituality yeah. and activism, it's not a balance, a binary like you said, right. but an integration in a sense. Like how do these, the notion of feeling interconnected of, you know, the notion of oneness and how to kind of achieve some of that and service through um, trying to create a more just world. Yeah. So uh, um, any any final advice you have to folks who are trying to figure this stuff out? I, I mean, you know, basically just to pay attention, yeah. pay deep, deep, deep attention to the small, still small yeah. voice and to be thinking about what you need and what you have to offer at any point. I mean, I can say for myself, even over the last month, I've had some phases being very intensely out in the world, and then knowing that in order to be useful, I needed mm -hmm. to go into a little more internal space. Yeah. And that then the next time I go out in the world, I'll, I'll have something to offer. Yeah. And so you just we need to do the, that work of, of listening and not letting the outside voices of, of shoulds or coulds right. or I feel bad because I'm doing this or I do feel not feel bad yeah. because I'm doing this. Just, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So, um, th friends, th th this is not new 21st century stuff. No. Moshe was in spiritual <laughs> resistance from Paro. And Mordechai and Esther from Haman and Achash Verosh, and yeah. you know, in the times of the Romans and the Greeks, and throughout and through the Shoah and well beyond, this notion of Juda Judaism has tools and deep spiritual practices to help us uh, actualize our leadership in society. Check out Rabbi Danya Ruttenberg, check out her writings, check out her leadership at Avodah and beyond. Thank you so much. Thank you.